Hello class, Mr. Fino here. This is Unit 8, Lesson 4 on Daily Life in the Roman Empire. In this lesson, we will learn how wealth affected daily life in the Roman Empire. So when we say wealth, we mean how much money people had. So there would be a stark difference uh, in the lives of the rich versus the poor. All right, so first, let me just talk a little bit about the Roman Empire. So around 100 CE of the Common Era, um, the Roman Empire was at the height of its power. And one um, phrase that people would often uh, say is all roads lead to Rome, right? Because for thousands of miles, road markers showed the distance from a location to Rome. Um, but it was more than just roads that connected the empire's 50 million people. They were also connected by Roman law, Roman customs, and the military might of the Roman army. All right, so if Rome was the center of the empire, then the forum was the center of Rome. So if the forum means gathering place, and it was an open area used for merchant stalls and for viewing races, games, and plays. But eventually, like you see here, it became a sprawling complex of government buildings, meeting halls, temples, theaters, and monuments. And it was the heart of life in Rome. Um, so yeah. Uh, our first topic here is law and order in the Roman Empire. So in the Roman Empire, the emperor was the ultimate source of the law. And um, the Senate, which was, you know, right, big during the Republic, um, they did continue to meet. And, you know, they didn't have power, but senators did have high status in society. And they wore these togas with a purple stripe, probably, it's probably silk, um, which they probably, you know, would have traded with China. And also senators would have hired bodyguards to protect themselves. Um, the most common crimes in Rome were stealing, assault, which is attacking people, and murder. And um, the Roman police commonly patrolled wealthy neighborhoods, but not the poor sections of the city. So um, it was so bad in the poor sections of the city that uh, they would even sometimes uh, uh, close these sections at night. So here we see the Roman police force um, carrying their bundle of sticks with an ax in the center, um, which was symbolic for the right of Roman citizens to appeal a ruling against them. A little bit more about law and order in the Roman Empire. So any Roman could accuse someone else of a crime. Right? So it didn't matter if you were poor or you're wealthy. If someone committed a crime against you, you could you could accuse them and bring them to court. Um, a jury of citizens, as you probably see up here, decided on the case, just like we have today. And the accused, the people that were accused of committing the crime, would often try to stir up sympathy by either wearing dirty clothes or having their wife and children sob in front of the jury to, right, to gain sympathy, make them feel bad for them, so they might let them off. And next, we have religion in the Roman Empire. So the Romans adopted, like we learned earlier, in uh, a number of Greek gods, but also other gods. They kind of assembled their own sort of group of gods. And they believed that their gods controlled their daily lives. And so they made offerings and sacrifices to them because they wanted to, to please them. So they left things like food, they left food like honey cakes, which we see here, um, and they also other foods as well. And they all sort of sacrifice animals like bulls, sheep, and oxen. Um, the Romans honored their emperors as gods. So the emperors were almost seen like as gods. One such emperor, Caligula, built a temple with a golden statue of himself inside. Um, this is Caligula. And he was so extreme with this that he actually, every single day, would dress his statue in the exact clothes he was wearing that day. Um, and this last thing is important as we're going to get into the next section. 
Um, foreigners were allowed to bring new forms of worship to Rome just as long as they also showed loyalty to the emperor. So as long as they worshiped the emperor, people could really believe in anything they wanted to. But one such religion that caused problems was Christianity um, because these people did not want to worship the emperor as a god. They had their own god that they believed was above all other gods. All right. Let's go on to family life in the Roman Empire. So the term paterfamilias uh, means father of the family. And the paterfamilias, or the father of the family, ruled family life. Um, Roman men were expected to provide for their families, with the exception of poor families where both husband and wife were expected to work because they, need, they both needed to work to, to make ends meet. Um, wealthy Roman women ran their households and were often often active in business, uh, property acquisition, so real estate, and they also bought and trained the family slaves. Um, the Romans kept only strong, healthy babies, which you know is um, kind of similar to when we think of Sparta, right? Roman boys became adults between the ages of fourteen and eighteen, and Roman girls became adults when they married between the ages of 12 and 18. So what just popped up there next to the boy, this is called a, it's a good luck charm called a bula. And this is a special um, charm that was placed around the baby's neck when they were nine days old. And they wore this throughout their childhood, right? This, this right here. And um, between the ages of 14 and 18, a Roman boy celebrated becoming a man. And in this ceremony, he offered his bula along with the childhood toys and clothes to the gods, right? But girls, Roman girls, they just became a, adults when they married, which is between the ages of 12 and 18. All right, so now on to food and drink in the Roman Empire. So the poor had no kitchens. So they depended on uh, Thermopylae, where they could purchase, it's kind of like fast food, the fast food of the Roman Empire. It wasn't a McDonald's, but uh, they could purchase warm and cold meals fast and conveniently. Um, the main foods in ancient Rome were bread, beans, spices, vegetables, cheese, and meat. Um, merchants often kept playful monkeys, like you see here, or colorful birds to attract customers in their stalls. And then um, Romans used a salty fish sauce called garum over their meals. So here's garum, probably what it looked like then. Now it's much more... Um, uh, refined, so it looks more like a liquid here because it's still used today. But um, if you're interested in learning how garum is made and just the, the history behind it, there's a YouTube video you could search here. It's called I Finally Made Garum. It's under the Tasting History with Max Miller. It's pretty interesting. And they sh he shows how he makes it and then he tries it. it looks pretty gross. Um, housing in the Roman Empire. So... Um, wealthy Romans lived in grand homes built from marble with thick walls that shut out the noise of the city because, you know, oftentimes their, their homes are right next to the poor. So that was, that was helpful. Um, inside the front door was the atrium where guests were received. And here, I believe this is a picture of the atrium. You can see, uh, there's a pool down here, right? Which provided some, some, um, cooling for the room. And there was an opening in the ceiling that brought in natural light. Uh, there are also many rooms for the family and guests around this. Um, statues and mo mosaics adorn the different rooms. You can see a statue here. You can see mosaics along the walls. Um, mosaics being, uh, it's a form of art comprised of uh, many tiles. All right. So, um, yeah. And also on the floors as well. And then at dinner parties, as you see here, guests would have laid on couches while slaves perform music with um, the lyre or the lute. All right. And the poor lived in crowded apartment buildings, as you might see here. And they cooked meals on portable grills that filled the room with smoke. Um, also, filth and disease carrying rats cause illnesses to spread quickly in these areas. And also, many of these buildings were made from wood. So fires would often spread dangerously through the poor areas of the city. All right, education in the Roman Empire. 
So most poor Roman children were sent to learn a new trade. They didn't go to school. So they would have learned trades like um, metalworking, leatherworking, right? And um, wealthier Roman children were tutored by their fathers or by or by slaves until about the age of, I believe, six, um, six years old. Um, and as they got older, about the age of six and older, they were sent to classes in public buildings. So students actually wrote on a wax covered wooden board with a stylus, as you see here, you can see they would have been able to write with the stylus on the wax and, and then they would have like wiped it off so that they could start fresh the next day. Um, school typically lasted until about two or three in the afternoon. So very similar to what we see for us these days. And um, Roman boys would have learned subjects like Latin, Greek, math, science, literature, music, and public speaking. Uh, boys, uh, through their education, typically became soldiers, doctors, politicians, or lawyers. And girls could typically become dentists, real estate agents, tutors, or midwives, which are midwives or they help women have babies. All right, recreation in the Roman Empire. So both the rich and the poor relaxed at Rome's public baths. So literally it was like a public, a large public bath, kind of like a swimming pool as well. And uh, here they could bathe, exercise, or enjoy a steam bath or massage. You can see a rendering of what it looked like filled with people in ancient Rome. Uh, Roman emperors uh, made, made sure to provide the poor with what, there's a common turn of phrase known as bread and circuses, which just means food and entertainment to distract the people, right? So both the rich and the poor flock to, so there's bread, right? Which, you know, the emperors just made sure they gave them enough to, to, to make it, right? To distract them and to make sure they were surviving. But both the rich and the poor flocked to gladiator contests, right? Where, um, you know, in the public arenas, the large public arenas, like the, like the Colosseum, both men and women were gladiators. Usually they were slaves or prisoners of war, although some won or bought their freedom eventually. The crowd would have shouted at the gladiators as they fought each other and wild animals to the death. And many thousands of gladiators died bloody and painful deaths to the entertainment of the spectators. And then the, the other thing that both the rich and the poor would have flocked to are chariot races. Um, and a favorite gathering place for this was the Circus Maximus, which was a huge racetrack that could accommodate 200,000 spectators. Um, and, um, while men and women had different seating sections at the Colosseum where the gladiators fought, they could actually sit together at the Circus Maximus. So the Circus Maximus, as you see here, was the best place to meet a boyfriend or a girlfriend. How romantic. Um, and then lastly, we have country life in the Roman empire. So 90% of the Roman empire's people lived in the countryside. So a huge majority. Um, wealthy Romans owned, uh, so here's the countryside, wealthy Romans owned country estates with villas. So a villa is pretty much a, a pal, a, a big, uh, home, a mansion, um, on, on a country estate. Um, and so the empire's farms produce grain for bread, grapes for wine and olives for oil. And then many animals were also kept for various products, such as goats and sheep. Uh, goats provided cheese and sheep provided wool for clothing. Um, you've got cattle and pigs provided meat and bees provided honey, which was a popular sweetener in ancient Rome and much of the ancient world. And lastly, we've got uh, slaves. They did most of the work in the farms. Um, so the people that lived there, the, the wealthy, just kind of hung out and relaxed and um, looked over things, but slaves did the work. Uh, but then also there were poor people who lived in the countryside who might have lived in huts, like you see here, working on their own small farms to support themselves, or they might have labored on the estates of, of the wealthy um, to make a living as well. All right, so in this lesson, we learned how wealth, again, which means how much money someone has, affected daily life in the Roman Empire. And the thing you need to remember is, right, the rich had it very good, but the vast majority were poor and lived in slums and didn't necessarily have the best situation. All right. Thank you.